0.81. The instructor isn't going to go point by point, but he wants to know that they're roughly in the same same spot if on everybody's pages. Like if he's flipping through these, he's going to say, oh, why, you know, if you put that last point over here, he's going to wonder why you did that. Yeah. So it's, it's, you've got to, you got to say, okay, I, you know, I'm comfortable doing this. So that's draw a scatter plot. Did that. Okay. Now the line of best fit, that's where you got to come in and, and you got to, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, you got to like, be like, okay, what, line like is is that the right line well maybe you know is, is that the right line you you got to you kind of have to draw a line that you think is reasonable yeah and i i can't i can't see your paper you know you're not gonna be able to exactly draw mine but there are lines that are wrong this one's wrong this one's wrong there's some that are wrong draw so, in just, where the dots are or? so so what you're looking for is is it should be kind of half above half below so something like that might be reasonable. Okay. Roughly. Got it. Okay. So we've done that. Check. Write the equation slope and some form of an equation for the line of best fit. So we can we can do this by remembering y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus b. Since the graph contains the y-intercept, like you could basically estimate that black uh, point right there. Um, it's somewhere between five and 5.2. What would you estimate that to be? 5.1. 5.1, so that's your B value. Okay. Your slope comes from either using a couple of points on the graph. See how our line goes through a point, the one and the, the, this ordered pair, yeah, yeah, I see. And this one, you could you could use those points. You could also kind of do a rise over a run thing. Yeah. What's not clear to me is how accurate you need to be. Right. Basically, it's like, do you need to do you need to you know be really accurate, or is it okay to just be close enough? Okay. Do you have any Do you have any sense of that from your teacher? Yes. Yeah. Which, which which one do they want? Do you think he wants to use the data points and calculate the slope, or just kind of swag Honestly, it? I don't think it really matters that much to him. Okay, so we're going up point point two, and we're going right one. So that's the slope is point two over one, or just point two. And how do you know where to like go from it? Why why can't it be like five point two up? It could be. You could you could kind of go. It doesn't really matter, right? It's just, yeah, I mean, it's like reasonableness. Yeah, 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 okay. It's like if I ask you, you know, how, how long it's going to take you to get get home, you know, tell me yeah. 20 minutes, not, you know, yeah, an yeah. hour if it's wrong. Okay, okay. So, so 0.2x like this. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's sufficient. Okay. All right. 0.2x plus... So would that just be the final answer? That's the final answer. Okay, I see. All right, so let me uh, let me grab the next plot mm -hmm. and then grab the question. All right, so the uh, the uh, preamble here it says the ba baseball the scatter plot shows the average price of a major league baseball ticket from 1997 to 2006 determine what relationship and if any exists in the data basically they're asking you about what does this line tell you what's how would you describe this line to someone it's going up the ticket prices yeah so you'd say uh ticket price increases with time. Okay. Something like that. All right. Uh, part B. Part B says to use two specific points to write the slope intercept form of the equation for the line of best fit. So that is again y equals mx plus b. But this time, rather than going to the graph and sort of like 
doing the rise over run thing, you're going to use these two data points. Okay. So this is this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. I'm going to write the formula for slope. And I want you to calculate that. I'm going to step away for like 30 seconds to grab, grab a drink, but I'll be right back to help with the calculation if needed. All right. What did you come up with for the slope? Um, I got. Um, I'm better. Done something. Would I do two thousand and five minus nineteen ninety seven? That's on the bottom. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Top is the y values twenty two minus thirteen. Okay, nine over eight. And then you got to put that in a calculator and round to the nearest hundredth. So two decimal places. So I put nine, wait, wait, I do nine eighths and mm -hmm. round to the nearest hundred. Yes, so you're gonna round to two decimal places. I do, I don't have a, I don't think my calculator does that on my phone. All right, let me give you the uh, Desmos scientific. I don't know if we're gonna need any more today, how much more we'll need it, but let me send that over to you okay. uh, by the, in the chat there. Click on that and uh, work it out. It is important that you be able to do some of these calculations. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, our teacher wants us to get a calculator and I'm gonna get one, but well now uh, you're nine 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 over eight, nine slash eight or nine divided by eight. Nine eight and then I round to the nearest hundred. Two decimal places. Would it be one point one two five? That's three decimal places. So you look at the you look at the third decimal place. Does that cause the, the one to the left here to round up or stay the same? Round up? Yes. So this becomes 1.13. 1 .13. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So now we write the equation y equals 1.13x plus b. Okay. Okay. Now we're not done, but that's the start. That's the first step. You always find the slope first. We got the slope. Hooray. All right, to find the B value, we need an X and a Y. Do we have an X and a Y? Uh, yeah. We have actually two of them. So we, we're gonna pick one. I'm just gonna tell you, we're gonna pick the, the first ordered pair there. So the first ordered pair is 13 equals, that's the Y value. The X value is 1997. Okay. Okay, now, you have to go to that calculator again. I want you to go to that calculator, take 1.13 and multiply it by 1997. Okay. I take, wait, what do I take again? You're going to multiply 1.13 times 1997. 1.13 times, oh, 1.13 times what? 1997, the number in parentheses here. And that is two, two hundred and two. I don't even know how to say this. That's okay. You can just read the digits: two, two, five, two, six, two, point five, six point six one. Okay. Now our goal, our goal is to solve for b. Yeah. Which means that we have to undo this number. How do we undo this number? We add it or subtract it. 
Uh, which number? I just clicked on the, this. The 2256.61. How do we undo it and solve for uh, B? Subtract it. Yes. So you have to subtract that from both sides of the equation. You have to go back to your calculator there and, and write in 13 minus 2256.61. 13 minus 225. 6.61. 6.61. Yes. Six one. Yeah, this is kind of hard doing it over Zoom, but uh, negative two two four three point six one. Yes. Now the the thing that I sent you, the Desmo Scientific, they have an app and it's available on your phone, so you may oh, okay. consider yeah. that. Yeah. yeah um, it's uh, you know, won't mess up your uh, app feed if you uh, you know, give it give it five stars, but. So that B value goes back into the equation. So you have to rewrite the equation with that B value in it. Okay. So it's Y equals 1.13X minus- Wait, do I have to calculate this? No. Okay. You're just rewriting the equation. Okay. Y equals 1.13X minus two. Two, four, three point six one. And how am I supposed to rewrite that? I'm kind of no, no, that, that that is that is it. That's the answer. Oh, okay. There's nothing more to do. Okay. Right. Any questions on that? Um, not really. Okay, we do need the we do need the calculator for part C. Okay. It says here in part C, I'm going to snip this in. It says to predict the price of a ticket in 2009. Okay. So in your, in your equation, uh, that means that X is 2009 and you're trying to figure out the Y value. The Y value is the, is the price. This is where you use the equation and you put that number in for X. So Y equals 1.13. 2009 minus 2243.61. Okay, so that's where you got to go to that calculator and put all this in there. Okay. So if you need to you know, take a quick picture or write it down on your paper and then go to the calculator, but you need yeah, to see that. It's the y equals one point. Yes. Yes. And the nice thing about that calculator is you can enter it just like it's written. You don't have to make any modifications like you have to with other calculators. One point one three and then yeah this is like a lot of more learning how to do like calculator work too. Yeah which is a good skill to have you're gonna use different tools over your life and for sure four three point six one Okay, I got 26.56. That's right. And that's the new price. The price of a baseball ticket in 2009 is $26.56. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. So then I'm looking at the next page you sent over. Yeah. Quite a bit of work here to do. All right. Um, all right. Let me try to try to frame this properly. All right, so here we go. Uh, here it is. They're giving you the data values on the left, and then you have to make a graph here on on the right. All right, so this it's a little bit confusing because you probably haven't you know dealt with latitude much in your life. Uh, but the first ordered pair is forty two point two forty two point four. We'll just say forty two point four, comma twenty point seven. 
Now, unfortunately, they're not like they're not in order. So you're going to be kind of moving all, all around here. But step one is to just graph all these, these points. So like the first one, 42, and then 20.7, you know, I'll just say is roughly there. You're just trying to get rough. You're not trying to get perfect. Uh, so I guess let me, if you, if you got your paper out, you can copy as we go. Yeah. Uh, the next one is 35 and then 34. So I'll just put a point roughly there. Next one is 61 and 15. Uh, I'm just rounding to make it easy for us. 33 and 41. All right. And then 32 and 47. There's that point. 41 and 21. It's kind of there where we already had one. Then uh, 39 and 26. Maybe there. 46 and 7. There's that point. Um, 65 and minus 10. So somewhere down there on the lower right. Are you able to follow along? Yeah, I am. Okay, 30 and then 52. I'm up to I'm up to here now. 29 and 53. Somewhere like that. 21 and 70. Three-ish, way up here. Thirty-six and forty-five. So kind of another one, just kind of right in here. Okay. Uh, up down to Miami, twenty-five and sixty-seven degrees. Richmond, Virginia, is thirty-seven and thirty-five-ish. <clears throat> oh, then did get Tucson in there. 32 and 51, let's just say roughly in there. Okay, you wanna spend the time to do this, even though you know, maybe you think you can get away with just kind of doing it wherever. It's, it's you gotta, the, the instructor can tell whether you've done this right or you've just sort of put them wherever. Yeah. Okay, now we now need to, this is, so after you graph, we now have to do the line of best fit. And this is tough because it's like there's kind of a line that goes through the data, but it seems to not really incorporate these points. So this is going to it's again, just kind of like a you know best best case trying to get a line here. Uh, you know, is that the best line? Is that the best line? You know, I'm not sure. Really not sure. But something like that would be good. Okay. Now, kind of like what you mentioned, you do actually start using the calculator for this, but I don't know if you will in your course, but it, this is totally a calculator problem where you would, you'd want to get the, uh, you'd want to get the, get that information uh, in the calculator, let, let the computer do it for you. Okay. So that takes care of part one, our question one that says now write an equation for the line of best fit. So we've got to kind of eyeball this a little bit. Um, what I like to do is grab points that are nice. Like that one kind of goes through a perfect point and that one kind of goes through a perfect point there in blue. Yeah. So the, the, the one up there at the top is 25 and 70. And then the other one is like 50 and 10. Okay. And we're going to use those two points to calculate the slope. Okay. So again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay. And so now we got to put these values into the equation. So 10 minus 70 over 50 minus 25 ends up being negative 60 over 25. And uh, if you got moment there whenever you get caught up you're going to put that in the calculator and let me know uh negative 60 divided by 225 yes go ahead and calculate that for us please negative 60 
Divide by 25. Yes. Negative 2.4. Okay, good. So when we write our equation, y equals mx plus b, we have the slope. Okay. At the slope is minus 2.4. Okay. Yeah, that's why that's why it's so important to calculate it that way we we've got it so we got y equals minus 2.4 x plus b to find b you have to use one of these ordered pairs okay so i'm actually gonna use the one on the right because it looks kind of better 50 and 10. Gotcha. 10 equals minus 2.4 times 50 plus b so i'd like you to go back to the calculator minus 2.4 times 50 for us, please. 2.4, sorry. Wait, can you read me it? My, my, negative 2.4. Okay. Times 50. Times 50? Times 50, yes. Uh, negative 120. Okay. Can you go back to the screen here to see? Uh, yeah. Uh, so how do we undo this minus 120? Uh, you add 120. Add 120 to both sides. Good. All right, so B ends up being 130. That goes into this line right here, and that is the equation Y equals minus 2.4X plus 130. Okay. And that is the answer for question two. Now we can quickly make a conjecture. It says make a conjecture about the relationship between a city's latitude and its mean January temperature. So what I want you to focus on on the graph here is what do you see graphically? What's going on in the graph right here? Uh, uh, it's going down. Right, so that's how you answer it. You say as latitude increases, mean January temperature decreases. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and stop there for today.